Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. Are you ready to begin studying? The topic for today is kind of interesting, and you've probably experienced it in your life, right? We're talking about a home away from home. A home away from home. We're going to focus on moving to a new home. Have you ever moved in your life, right? Did you move to a new apartment? Or a new house, maybe you move to a new neighborhood, or a new city, or maybe even a new country, right? So people nowadays move a lot, right? You think about it,、uh, and you know, sure, there are some people who live in one place all their life, but it's becoming more and more common for people to move to different places and live in a few different places when they grow up. I probably am a very extreme example of that. By the time I finished high school, I had moved about five times. My family moved about five times. Why? Because my father is a geologist, right? A geologist, a geologist. So his company sent him geologist, geologist. His company sent him to many different places in the world. So when I was growing up, you know, I lived in New Mexico, Wisconsin, North Carolina. Papua New Guinea, Colorado, Arizona, Nevada. We moved so many different times because of my dad's job. So maybe your dad's job or your mom's job takes you to different places. Or maybe when you go to school, when you go to college, you might go to another city or maybe even a different country. By the way, if you get a chance to go to another country to study for college. Take that chance. Look for that opportunity. It's a very good experience for you. Anyway, that's the topic. Moving to new homes. So nowadays, it's not unusual for us to think of any place can be a new home. We can move just about anywhere and live anywhere. So that's what we're going to read about. But first, let's take a look at the vocabulary. Our first word is New York loves ugly. <laughs> that's not our first word. It's just an interesting T-shirt. A person whose home is in a certain area. So New York, of course, is a very famous town. They're very famous for their spirit, right?、Uh, people who live in New York, they can call themselves citizens of New York. Okay. Usually, though, we use citizen for country. For example, people who live in New York are citizens of America. They are American citizens. People who live in Seoul are usually Korean citizens, right? If your if your passport has the name of the country on it, right, you are a citizen of that country. If you have a Korean passport, you are a citizen of Korea. If you are have an American passport, you are a citizen of America, and the same for every country in the world. So, which country are you a citizen of? Okay, next one. Do you know this place, Machu Picchu? Right. <laughs> this is an event that a person goes through. If you go visit a, a world famous place like this,、uh, what do you say? It's an、uh, an experience, an experience. So if you go and see Machu Picchu in Peru, or you go see the pyramids in Egypt, or you go see the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, that is an experience that you will remember. Experience, 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 experience. Okay, so、uh, probably you have good experiences of traveling. Maybe your family has taken vacations to different places, right? You have good experiences of your traveling. Next one, to fit in naturally. To fit in naturally means to belong. Of course, these apples do they belong together? You might say, well, the red one doesn't belong. But maybe it does. It depends on how you look at it. They're all apples, right? So it belongs together because they're all apples. But maybe other people say it doesn't belong because it's red and the others are green. But to fit in naturally means to belong somewhere. It belongs with the others. Of course, if you go to the supermarket, apples are in one section. Sure, you have green apples, red apples,、uh, yellow apples in different places, but they're all together, kind of in the same area. They belong in the same area. This is an interesting idea. Do you know this? For a type of living thing to change slowly over time. So we think about this. When you think about the the age of the Earth, 
how old is the Earth, right? 4.5 billion years old. We can't even imagine that time. How long has life been on Earth? Since at least 3.5 billion years, right? Now, over that long time, life has changed into many different forms. What do we call that process? This is usually the, the picture that they usually show. How accurate it is, you know, maybe it, we don't know. But it, it shows that monkey-like creatures changing slowly into human beings, we say evolve. Now, of course, monkeys did not evolve into human beings. Monkeys are cousins to human beings. This creature doesn't live anymore. It's extinct. It's gone. But all living creatures have evolved over time into different forms and shapes. If you look at horses, uh, go back and look at the evolutionary history of horses, or very interesting, look at whales. It's very interesting how whales, their ancestors came on land and then went back to the sea. They evolved. They changed over time. So it's a very interesting um, uh, idea about the world and it was first evolution was first proposed by Darwin Charles Darwin in 1860 something I can't remember the exact date but of course his his idea was very controversial but nowadays most scientists more than 90 percent of scientists uh, 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 say that this is fact it's not a theory anymore it it actually happened and when you think about it it makes sense okay so evolve okay so next one, to create copies of oneself. So when, a, uh, when adult animals have babies, what are they doing? They are reproducing. So mama, uh, mama sheep will have a baby sheep, right? A lamb. Okay, so reproduce, reproduce, reproduce. Reproduce means to make copies of oneself, okay? So uh, when animals grow up, they become older, they become adults, then they can reproduce and have babies of their own. Next one. To increase. Okay, so something is increasing. What does it mean? It means rise. So we can see a rise. Usually we use this for charts when we're, you know, you see business people using uh, this type of graph for, to show an increase in sales perhaps. So they say there's been a rise in sales. Okay, a rise, to increase. Rise is a verb, by the way, but also a noun. Because I said there has been a rise. But you could also say sales have risen. Okay, rise, rose, risen. Because as a verb, rise is irregular. We say rise, rose, risen. Okay. But sometimes rise can also be a noun. Okay, next one. Wow, this is a very, probably European city, very colorful, very interesting place. But if you look at it, you also get the impression there's so many people there. Wow, it's really a lot of uh, people. So, to fill with animals or people is to populate, populate, populate. So. Uh, you know, a long time ago, there weren't that many people, but people, you know, increased. The numbers of people increased and increased. The numbers of people rose. And the earth was populated with human beings, okay? And, of course, all sorts of other types of animals. Next one. A group of people sharing certain traits and beliefs. If we look at the American Indian here, we know that American Indians share certain beliefs and behaviors. They do the same things and they believe many different things. Of course, different tribes have different beliefs. I'm not saying all American Indians are the same. That's not true. But a certain group, certain tribes, like the Apache or the Cherokee or the Mohican, right? They would have, in their tribes, they would have the same beliefs or the same traditions. And of course, the same is true with countries. Korean culture. Well, I gave, just gave you the, exam, the answer. Culture. It's a group of people who share the same beliefs and uh, uh, behaviors. Actually, culture, when you think about it, culture isn't really, you don't say culture is people. Say culture is the beliefs or behaviors of a certain group of people, right? It's what they do. So Korean culture is different from American culture, which is different from French culture, okay? So different areas, different groups of people have different culture or different cultures. Okay, next one. Number nine, standing straight, not upside down. So if you're standing straight up, right, you are upright, 
upright. Now, this is important, of course, when you're shipping something. If you're sending something in the mail, you write on one side of the package, uh, uh, this side up, right? You want it to be upright. You don't want it to be upside down because that could be that could possibly damage what you have in the container. Also, it's more natural for us to be upright, right? When we're walking around, we don't walk around on our hands upside down. That makes our head hurt. Okay, next one. 10, a group of people living and working together. So a group of people living and working together. What do we call them? We call that society. And we don't, society is a singular noun. Okay, society, so not, not it, not them, but it. What do we call a group of people living and working together? What do we call it? We call it society. And societies have different sizes, right? A society can be as small as your family, but uh, usually we talk about society in terms of like uh, as big as a city or as big as a nation or sometimes a global society. So the entire human population in the world, we can also think of it as a society. It depends on what our purpose is. What is our intention? Do we just want to focus on a small group or are we talking about issues that affect a very big group? So society, when we think about it, can be small or big. But usually we think about it as the society in which we live, right? What is the uh, uh, you know, the, the behavior or, or the beliefs or the customs, the culture of the people that we're living in with. What is the size of society? And of course, what are the laws of society? That's something we have to uh, think about as well. Law, the laws, uh, what do we have to do to obey the laws? What are the expectations of society? What are we expected to do in society? So society is basically the group of people in which we live. Okay. 11, whoa, what's wrong with these people? They look very strange. <laughs> they have really long legs. The, the idea here is for most of the time, for most of the time, we say generally, generally. So if we talk about basketball players, we can make general statements. Most of the time, basketball players are very tall. They have very long legs <laughs> that look like golf clubs. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, they don't. But usually basketball players are very tall, generally. Not all. Sometimes you can find short basketball players who are very good at uh, passing the ball or getting the ball down the court. But generally, usually, uh, for most of the time, basketball players are very tall. And we can make general statements about different groups of people. But again, be careful about making general statements because you can always find exceptions, right? It's not always the same. Okay, next one. A long period of almost no food. So these people are looking for food and they endure a long period when there, no food has been grown. Maybe it's too hot. There's no water. So they can't grow food. We call that time a famine. Famine is a period of time that no food is available. A long time ago, of course, uh, when people couldn't grow crops or there were no animals to hunt, right? It was too hot. There was no water, no food. So we call that period a famine. Nowadays, of course, famines can be caused by uh, the supply chain breaking down, right? People getting food to a certain place and that could also cause a famine. Next one. Wanting to know more. So this little boy is very curious. Most children are very curious. Generally, children are very curious about the world around them. They are curious. They want to know more about the world. Okay. Next one. To run away from. Run! <laughs> right? There's a bull. I don't know if you can see. You can't see the head, but this is a bull with big horns. And these guys, I think they're in Spain, perhaps Pamplona, uh, where they have every year they run away from the bull, which is crazy. You know, a bunch of people will get ready. They'll release a bull, and these guys will run down the street running away from a bull. Why? <laughs> okay, well, different people have different hobbies, I guess. Okay, so to run away from means to flee to flee, to run away. Now flee is an irregular verb, so we say flee, fled, fled. Flee, fled, fled. These men fled from the bull, okay? They are fleeing from the bull. Okay, next one. To come from a source. Now to come from a source, it means dis descend, to descend. And we're talking about evolution here. It's a strange picture, uh, but I think what they're getting at is that on a chain, right, there's a watch that descends from the chain. but. Uh, to come from a source, we can also think, think about the word evolution. Remember the picture evolution? We saw the monkey type creature and then we saw a human being. So uh, usually, when we, especially when we talk about evolution, we say that 
the modern creatures, the modern animals, have descended from a previous animal. Usually, not always, but generally, these animals are extinct. They don't longer live. They, we can't see them nowadays. Sometimes they, they, they still exist in certain cases, but usually our ancestors are extinct, right? There are no more uh, uh, early humans that are alive. People have to go and dig up their bones, right? Um, for the ancestors of human beings. But we descend from some source, from a source. Every living thing has descended from one source. Okay, next one. In a single group. So in a single group, we can say together. So if the dog and the cat are in a single group, they look like they're friends. That's a very interesting picture. Uh, they're together, right? They're together. They're pals. They're buddies. They're together in a group. Okay, so you're together with your friends. Probably when you go out to play, you're together in a group. Okay, let's go over the words and see how well you remember the vocabulary. Number one, hang gliding. Remember hang gliding from a previous lesson, right? That's where you're flying, soaring through the air on a bar with a wing above you. Hang gliding is a great what? A, citizen. B, bridge. C, experience. D, culture. Which word fits? Well, is hang gliding a great citizen? It's a citizen of a country? That doesn't make sense. Is it a great bridge? That doesn't make sense either. Is it a great experience? Remember, an experience is something that you remember. It's a memorable happening in your life. Something, an event, or something that happens in your life. That's a great experience. So hang gliding is a great experience, isn't it? Because, wow, that'd be great. I haven't done it yet. I would like to someday, but it would be a great experience. And D, of course, hang gliding is not a great culture. That doesn't make sense. Hang gliding, something you do, an event that you remember, it's a great experience or it's an experience. Number three, modern birds. Beep from dinosaurs. Okay, there's actually two words from the vocabulary list that we could use here, but only one of those is here. Thank goodness, because if both of them were here, we would have to choose both, <laughs> but there's only one. So, a, populated, B, evolved, C, reproduced, and D, created. Let me tell you the word that could fit here, but it's not on the answer list, and that, of course, is descend. We could use descended, descended, modern birds descended from dinosaurs, that would fit, but it's not one of our choices. But remember when I was describing or explaining the meaning of this word descend, we just did this, right, a couple slides ago, or I think it was the last word, descend, I said, I gave you the example of, right, all living, all living things descended from a previous animal. And we saw that diagram, we saw that idea with which word? Of course, it was with evolved, evolve. So we could use either word. Modern birds evolved from dinosaurs or modern birds descended from dinosaurs. It means the same thing. Not populated, not reproduced, not created, those don't fit. We're talking about, you know, a previous life form or a previous type of animal that gives birth, that reproduces, but over a long time and changes into another type of animal. And that's evolution, that's also descending from another animal. Uh, species or another type of animal. So modern, bird, modern birds evolved from dinosaurs. And by the way, that's a very interesting idea. If you think, oh, dinosaurs are no longer in the world, they're all extinct, they're gone. Not true. Birds are a type of dinosaur and we can see them every day. Very interesting. Okay, five, school is strange. I don't feel like I, what? I don't feel like I, if you think school is strange, you don't, what? I don't feel like I what? I don't feel like I A, belong, B, make, C, empty, D, slip. So if you think someplace is strange or a group of people is strange, you don't fit in, right? You don't belong. I don't feel like I belong. Maybe you do belong, but you don't feel like I belong. That's too bad. You have to make some friends. If you make friends, you get used to the people there, you find out, oh, they're, they're good people, then you feel like you belong in a place, right? But if you feel strange uh, about the people you're with, you don't feel like you have anything in common, it's hard to talk to them, then you feel like you don't belong, okay? Not make, not empty, not slip, those don't make sense. The best one is belong. Seven, South America has a really interesting what? Immigration, 
B, culture, C, famine, or D, hat? Well, famine is not interesting. It's terrible. It's horrible. Uh, so that doesn't work, right? It ha has a really interesting hat, just one. <laughs> South America has an interesting hat. It's a really big hat that it puts on the whole continent. Now, that's crazy, right? Has an interesting immigration. We don't think of immigration as being interesting. We think of immigration as being a pain in the butt, right? It's very difficult, right? So the only one South America has a really interesting culture that would fit because the beliefs and the customs in South America are very interesting. But by the way, South America has many different countries in South America. And of course, there are different cultures in each of those different countries. And maybe even inside those countries, there might be different cultures inside the country. So South America has really interesting cultures would be more accurate, right? But you could, if you're talking about all the, the culture or the, the same beliefs and behaviors that all people from South America seem to generally uh, show, then that could be possible too. But it'd be more accurate to say there are many different cultures in South America and those cultures are interesting. Okay, that wraps up the vocabulary section of this lesson. Let's take a short break. We'll come back and look at the reading.